All right, thanks for tuning in to our preview of the 152nd Open Championship from Royal Troon in Scotland. Joining Jared and I this week, Hall of Fame golfer Jan Stevenson, who's going to help us uh, dissect the major golf course she has played before, because she's played everywhere, uh, with holes uh, that have nicknames like the Posted Stamp and the Railway. Here on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. So uh, the gang's all back together again. Jan, good to have you on again. Uh, our last major of 2024. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here. This one is always a different major than the others, you know, because you have so many different European players as well playing. And and um, I actually think, I keep saying this, I think it's, it's a weak field as far as American players, but um, it's, it's still fun to watch because of the weather. Um, okay, so as far as uh, holes, I mentioned a couple of them uh, before I started. The railway and the posted stamp. These are two of the more famous ones. Matter of fact, Jan, the railway, the 11th hole, is considered one of the toughest par fours in the world. Um, I'm going to uh, pop up a little bit of a video regarding that hole here in a sec. Why don't you talk a little uh, about that hole? How, how far are they playing it? It's so yeah. So they added 200 yards to this course since uh, the the Stenson when um, 16 of those yards went to number 11. So I I see it listed as 498 yards. For par four. Par four. So, yeah. so what we so we got to figure out which way the wind is. No one if that's against the wind or a side cross. It's almost worse if it's crosswind because they have to keep it on you know keep it under the wind and control it. So mm -hmm. it, I can see why. And of course the green obviously as the, the the name said it's got a tiny little green so it's hard to get up and down so it's basically a par five i think it is a par five in the in the real in the and mm -hmm. for the amateurs and it doesn't look that much to play it but you can see isn't that the railroad yep that's the railway oh okay um the it, it it's just the green looks so little when you're playing back there and now they're going to be hitting in long irons if they're lucky and depending on the wind i mean you're going to be coming in there with you know metal woods of some kind but obviously i mean look how heavy that gorse is that's mm -hmm. that's a pretty tough hole I mean, it is very wide a fairway when you look at it it is quite wide but you still when you're coming in with a wood you don't want to even be in the in the like rough yeah so this and is see that bunker on the left if you get in that that bunker is a lot deeper than it looks <laughs> It, I bet it it's a six. Foot. That bunker probably goes down six feet, and it's a narrow green. And and look how close the out of bounds is on the right. Yeah. So it's one of those holes that, you know, you, it's a hole you might even want to lay up on because of the out of bounds there. And there's going to be a lot of green people that miss it left because they can't afford for it to go right. A lot's going to depend on the wind too. I didn't. I didn't confirm this, but that podcast I was listening to last night, uh, the guys were saying Jack Nicholas made a ten on this hole. <laughs> one of the years I was here. So. Yeah, I bet he hit it out of bounds with the bing because he hits it left to right. Uh, the eighth right. hole is called the Posted Stamp. It's 123 yards, and it's a, f a famous uh, hole, uh, short hole. Um, and I guess the, the, they have it because I guess the nickname comes from the posted stamp size green. Uh, they also have five bunkers. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Jan, talk a little bit about this posted well, stamp. It's the, it's the same distance as seven at Pebble, which, you know, people have always said they they've, some people have hit a wedge because it's going downhill. So the ball does all kinds of crazy things. And none oh, of those bunkers. look at that. Look at the bunker on the left. Mm -hmm. That bunker on the top and the left, the one that's pin high, that is really, if you get in that, you can't get up and down. Yeah. And so um, it's it's one of those ones where you may only have a wedge in. It's just like at TPC at Sawgrass and at, you know, 17 there and the same at seven at Pebble. You, you just have to get it on the green because it's not a hole that you can get up and down on them. If they play with the pin at all, and get it close to those bunkers. You know, because the way it is right now, it looks like the flag is in the middle. So mm -hmm. if you're pin high, 
you you can't get up and down if you're in those bunkers, especially the one on the left because it's downhill because you can't see that the actual the green sh slopes left to right. Okay. So is there a hole here that is like a guaranteed four? Oh, I mean, a, a bunker, I should say, that's a guaranteed four. Like you get in this oh, bunker, forget it. You're just. If you're in that, if you're in that bunker on the left, the one that's on the hill. This one? Yeah. You're on a downhill slope. It's, it's deep. Okay. And obviously if you're in the one in the back too, this the one, one in the back right. But a lot's going to depend yep. on the wind. And, you know, because yep. they're coming in with a wedge and they're having to hit, depending on, a lot depends on the wind. That, that left I mean, bunker looks like a, the, looks like the a coffin. The perfect place to hit it is, is just front right and just two putt and get out of there. You know, it's like all the, it's like all those little short par threes. It's just, it shouldn't be a hard hole because you've got a wedge in your hand. It, you know, it's kind of like um, 12 at, at Augusta, I mean, there, it's a nothing hole. But if you hit it in the wrong place, you're having a big number. Is that you, Jan? Yeah, somebody. All right. So, picks, Jared. Uh, I've already everybody has seen our picks, so I've uh, I'll pop up the pick ticker once again, so everybody can see it. So. Uh, Jared is going with Morikawa, Kepka, Cantley, Fianau, Batia. I'm going with Hatton, Clark, Young, M, Scott, and I throw in a couple of five dollar long shots in Burmester, and of course I have to put in Montesero. By the way, I have to ask you. I know you have never seen Montesero play before, and he really had a good uh, showing. Yeah. Um, he was even number one going into Sunday. What was he number one for? I forget. Was it Tita Green, I believe? Yeah, um, I think so. Yep. Was there anything about his game uh, that you noticed? I don't know if you looked at any stats or anything in particular since you've never really seen him play before. Because, again, by, when he was starting out when he was 17, 18, and he was like a superstar or a superstar to be, uh, that was um, you know almost 15 years ago. So yep. um, anything you noticed about his game that uh, intrigued you? Yeah, he uh, he was second in the field last week. Strokes gain approach. Number one was actually Shubankar Sharma, as a name I haven't heard in a long time. Um, but yeah, I, I caught a little Montessori. Looks like an excellent ball striker, and I know he's just he's I know he's been playing well on the DP World Tour. So um, you know, I wouldn't I, I'd be shocked if he won this week, but definitely it could be an interesting uh, top twenty, top forty bet. Okay, so uh, let's go down our picks, and we've already talked about Morikawa. Uh, my top pick is Hatton, and um, he has really started to up his game on Live. Uh, this, this is the best golf that he's played this year, and uh, I also like the fact that when I when, when I looked and found out that he played here, uh, the last time they played at Truon, he finished fifth. Um, I was already taking him, but that was just a, a red cherry on top that. That was one of his best ever. Might might actually be his best ever major finish. Uh, fifth at Troon, uh, the last time they played here. Um, and uh, yeah, and if he's going to win a major, you do get the feeling that it's got to be an Open Championship. He would just feel a lot more comfortable. He's such a stressed out kind of you know player. <laughs> that um, anyway, the one thing I don't like are the odds. I don't like him down at twenty five. It's a little low for me. Yep. But anyway, what do you think about Hatton? Well, he, well, I love his golf. The, yeah, go, go ahead, Jen. Uh, I I love his golf swing, so I'm glad to see that he's starting to play well. I feel like he would have done the same thing on the PGA Tour. He was kind of just breaking through, so he's he's a good pick. He's a little bit. The odds are not quite what he should be, but he's yeah. definitely got the game for it. Uh, pick number two each. Uh, Kepka for Jared and Clark for me. Kepka forty to one. Clark sixty to one. So you're going back to Kepka, uh, Jared. I think you've taken him a couple times already in majors this year, right? Uh, yes, I had him at PGA and U.S. Open, I believe. Um, yeah, I just 40 to one on Brooks Kepka at a major. Maybe I'm still living in 2023, and he's not the same guy. <laughs> you know, he's obviously been underwhelming at majors this year. But I mean, he ha he obviously hasn't won the Open, but he has three top six finishes um and you know brooks he started his career on i know he played the challenge tour over in europe which is like you know yep. their 
version of the corn fair then he was on the the uh, euro tour for a year or two so he definitely obviously you know has plenty of, uh, of experience i he's obviously not coming in in top form but again 40 to 1 kind of factors that in i think he's worth a shot uh and then uh my second pick uh being uh clark at, again 60 to 1 um I, I'm not sure I would be as ex, as interested in taking taking him until uh, he played really well on Sunday, and I thought I that agree. was very important. And considering we talked about how it looked like his game was getting <clears throat> close because he has had a pretty bad summer to this part or even spring, and he finally woke up a couple of events ago. Followed that up last week. So I think this is good timing now, especially again, the main thing for me is just the odds, Jan. If he's 20 to one, 30 to one, forget it, but I'm getting 60 to one with Clark. Well, that's a good one. Well, I'm going with Cam Smith. I think uh, I, that's pretty good odds. And, and you know, else that we haven't talked about is um, Matsuyama. I mean, Matsuyama plays in a lot of rain. <laughs> He, it, it's in in Japan. You, you play in a lot of rain, so because it rains there a lot, <laughs> so he's good in the rain. Yeah, Cam. Of course, uh, the interesting thing about Cam Smith is that if you throw out his win a couple of years ago, uh, he which he was twenty under par in that win, he is combined seventeen over par in the five other Open Championships. But I'm assuming with you liking him this week that you think, what, the course is more in line to fitting his game like it was a couple of years ago? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't fit it as well as this Royal and Ancient because Royal and Ancient, yeah, you have the pot bunkers, and it's, but it's pretty wide open, and he has that hook. Um, sometimes he gets that hook going, and, um, and he's got a brilliant short game. But what he does that a lot of the Americans don't have is that he has a short game because he's played in Europe and played in Australia where we have ridiculous amount of wind. He has really good imagination. He doesn't have to have it, you know, if it's really windy, he can get it, he can keep it down and chip yeah. it on the, along the surface. They're getting better at it. Over, uh, the Americans are getting a lot better at it, but I still think that his short game can keep him in there. Um, this is a golf course. It's not quite the same as as Royal and Ancient, but it's 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 less it, it's less American. So I think he's good. I mean, he's he can control if he can control the pot bunkers. He can control. He's really good around the greens here because he can get out of those pot bunkers like I've never seen anyone be able to spin it like he can out of those bunkers. Mm -hmm. All right, Jared and I are third picks. Uh, Jared went with Cantlay. I went with uh, Cam Young. Mm -hmm. Um, I just decided with Cam Young, same reason as Clark. Uh, he's trending now finally back in the right direction uh, as far as his game is concerned. I know he's he's sort of like uh, Oberg now, uh, the way Oberg is, is really can say he's more like Young now, uh, where he might be mm -hmm. choking a little bit uh, with that first win, but he seems to really uh, take the take to these Open Championship venues. So I think combined with the fact that uh, he's played really well here at the Open Championship and his game looks like it's trending in the right direction, I thought he's worth a shot at 50-1. to 1. Uh, you, you went with a surprise uh, pick, even though Cantley did uh, register an eighth a couple of years ago. Um, we've talked about it. Cantley is not very good in majors overall, but he did have his best major result, I believe, or at least it looked like it was his best major result uh yep. in the last major at the u.s open yeah i, I like that he just finally got in the mix and i know a lot, a lot of times and i was even looking back at the you know recent winners at the open a lot of times the winner ends up being a guy who was in the mix at one of the first three majors of the year so i like the can got the experience he followed that up with a fifth place at the traveler so he is definitely playing his best golf of the season and i don't think that's reflected in the odds at 40 to one. I mean, right. This is a guy who would have been, you know, 18 or 20 to one a year ago. So if he is, you know, back into form, I think it's a pretty good number. I, I hate that he's playing with tiger. That's um, the problem. But, you know, if I were, yeah. If I were to do this again, you know, after seeing the tea times, I'm not sure I would have gone with Cantley, but you know, so I, I do think 40 to one is a nice, playing with I mean, tiger. He, he, he can just, yeah, just survive those first two days with tiger. And then, then hopefully yeah, they, the they always say it's a two shot disadvantage <laughs> to be paired with tiger. Um, sure. So, you know, if, if he can overcome that, and plus, you know, he's got 
and it might help that he's got cat tiger's old caddy maybe he can control the, gra- the crowd a little bit better but i doubt it that's yeah, interesting that cantley and shoffley together we've always kind of put those guys almost like the same but hey maybe that's a good sign for cantley because shoffley just got over to hall they- winning a major yeah and they are and they are good buddies so hopefully yeah. that helps that's true that's true they'll be able to kind of console each other when tiger starts walking off when they're still trying to putt. <laughs> uh our fourth picks uh jared went with finau at 35 to 1 i went with uh sung jm at 60 to 1 and uh, i went with sung jm i believe it was the pga championship uh and then he, I, I believe he missed the cut so but since then <laughs> he's actually sort of playing better again so the problem with him is he's not played well at majors this year that's the problem but he does look like he's just close. I mean, he's trending the right way at the Open Championship. He's gotten better all three years there. He's also trending in the right direction after a fourth place finish last week. Um, and you're getting 60 to 1. So, yeah. So, I think him, maybe this is a good time for him. But uh, you decided to go with Finau uh, and uh, another player that's really kind of been struggling. I mean, if you take out wins at some easy golf courses the last couple of years, uh, he really hasn't. He had that one win in the playoffs, I believe, uh, three years ago. Maybe it was the first no, playoff he won, round. He won one. Or was that window? He won Mexico too. No, they, uh, that's what I was saying. He yeah. won easy events, but the yeah, he won. He won yeah, that. It was like Liberty. Was it? It was like Liberty National. Yeah, I think so. Courses by New York City. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, that's a great golf course. I love that course. So why this week with Finau? Yeah, I mean, whether Finau can actually win is always the question. And, man, I had kind of broken my – because I used to bet this guy at majors all the time five, five six years ago. I had kind of broken my Finau habit, but I'm, I'm back. I mean, he <laughs> he hasn't won, but he is playing excellent. I mean, 18th at the PGA, 17th at Charles Schwab, 8th at Memorial, 3rd at the U.S. Open, 5th at Travelers talked about the fact that he's a good win player. Jan mentioned that he's not a good putter on fast greens. These will not be fast greens. I actually looked at who the best putters are on slow greens for this week. Finau's 41st on that list. So not bad, but 41st for Finau's good, right? Like if he can putt above average, his ball striking has been good enough to potentially win this thing. And he, he does have a good open record. Um, so, and if, if there's one major where like an older guy, is going to win who maybe seems like you know past his prime it tends to be the open so i think this this could be a good spot for tony well i i love female swing and he's hitting it so long right now that um he's really swinging well and you know and this is a chance you know he's, he's a pretty good bunker player so that part of it you know you look at those deep bunkers you have around the green you don't have a lot of them like you do in america but when you get in and you better be you know they're not like easy shots to get out and it's different kind of sand over there the sand's heavier so you don't spin it as well but i think tiger i mean i think fino's got a chance over here in europe fino has six top 30s and seven open championship appearances with two top 10s one top five and he was 18th at troon the last time they played there so all good signs for tony fino this week our fifth picks uh, Jared, you went with Batia, uh, looking for that big breakout. He's at 125, so he's your official long shot, of course. And uh, I went with uh, Adam Scott as my fifth choice. Um, I just like the fact that he's still getting a good number at 60 to one. Uh, he's never won an Open Championship. I'm sure he feels like he's owed one. Uh, he let one slip away, as we all know. So um, you know, maybe this is a great timing for him. Uh, I, I think we've talked about this the, the last couple of years. Just feel like there's one more big win in Adam Scott's career. That wouldn't have been last week. So maybe it could be this week. If not, look, he's still only 43 years old. He's not 50. He's got more than enough time to, to get one more major win. So, uh, Jam, what, I know uh, you're, you're a big Scott uh, fan, of course. So what do you think about his chances this week? I actually like his chances a lot. The greens are slow. He's, a, he's like Tony. That they don't do well on five screens. You know, they, the only problem with, with, you know, if you look at last week, he left so many putts short in the heart, and he only, you know, and then missed that one on, on 18. I mean, he really threw it away. He threw his chance away to win another. Uh, Scottish Open is considered a major on the GP Tour, so he, he really screwed up. And, and he knows that. You could tell. And, but um, 
I, I like it because the, he can control his golf ball, and and uh, he's got a he's got a good short game, except for his putting. I mean, it's it's good enough. He's again played enough in Europe that he can get the ball on the ground if he has to. And then uh, as far as our long shots again, Jared went with Batia. I went with Burmester and Montesero. So uh, talk about Batia. Why why particularly this week that you figured you'd you'd you know roll the dice on him as a long shot. Yeah, I mean, it's, for starters, the number on just a guy I think is super talented that I do think is going to win a major at some point in his career. Like, I, I think by next year we could be talking about Akshay as like a top 10 player on the tour. So I'm just kind of trying to get out ahead of it. He's obviously had an awesome season. He cooled off after winning Valera, but he's trending back in the right direction now. 22nd at Memorial, 16th at the U.S. Open, and then his last two starts, 5th at Travelers, 2nd at Rock, Rock and Mortgage. Obviously, you know, missed, missed the, the short putt that would have sent yeah. it to a – playoff um yeah. you know he'd be snapping a lot of trends by winning as such a young player in his first open um again i think you know at, at 100 to 1 125 to 1 um i think I, i'm willing to take a shot on that oh he prob- I just don't, how's he going to be with a rain jacket on we have to worry about that because a lot of those little you know he's pretty tiny <laughs> yeah, and um, blow away. when you put your sweater and a rain jacket on it is so confining it's the horrible feeling i used Absolutely yeah. hated playing over in Europe because of that. You had to, you know, pack different clothes and yeah. and and if you you know he's grown up in the warm weather and it's really it's hard. I, I I never really, I didn't really well. I mean, I when I won over in Europe, I won the warm weather. I won the Moroccan Open and the French Open, so I didn't win the British. And so because I hated being cold and wet, so there's a huge difference when you put that cashmere sweater on long underwear and and then a rain jacket it is really hard to play and i don't know if he's used to that well uh he's going to try to do what uh morikawa did a few years ago mm-hmm. uh and win on his first try um and that he's was, a he's a good well, he's a good win good player too they had good weather that year that week too yeah they did yep. yeah and keep in mind you talked about him missing that putt that, at rocket mortgage i mean he had that event all sewn up he allowed Cam Davis, who was playing aggressive as well as he should, trying to catch up. And uh, Batia had basically the lead for four days and then just decided yeah. to get just all like, like play, he played the final day like the U.S. Open. Let me just par my way to victory. Uh, and then he missed that short putt. So I do wonder about his psyche just a little bit because we know it could turn on a dime, just like Oberg uh, trying to close. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see what happens. By the way, speaking of short putts, did you see Lahiri's short putt miss at the live yes, on Sunday? Oh, Yes. Did you, Jared? I, I, I was shocked. I was happy. Yeah. I was happy that um, I, I was happy to see the win in Spain. You know, from for Sergio, for Sergio. But no it, Sergio uh, this week at the Open Championship. That's pretty sad. No Sergio. He's not in it. No. At least, oh, wow. at least we got Louis. We got Louis though. Yeah, we do. We, Louis we do have Louis Ustase. So. Yes, he's definitely somebody that uh, I think I've, I've mentioned. I put a future on him. Uh, so I already have a future on him this week. I think he's 80 to one or something like that. Um, so yeah, before we go, uh, any long shots, uh, that you were thinking about Jared, uh, that, uh, you might throw a buck on, or you would advise maybe some, uh, some crazy, uh, betters like me that like to throw like (laughs) 10, $1 bets on long shots. Yep. There. Yeah, there are a few guys right here showing that I considered. Uh, Nikolai Hoigard, I consider just a good late yep. player. Was playing well uh, last week until yes, Sunday. Yes, he was. I think Sepp Straka is interesting, just the year he's had and the fact that he was second last year. I think I think Sam Burns at 125. I mean, I know oh, we talked Sam about Burns. his struggles in majors, but he, he, he was in the mix over the weekend at Pinehurst and 125 to 1. And then Will Zalatoris, I'll probably throw a couple. <laughs> you on love Will. At, at 150 to one. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Just, just, just out of respect for Will, I might throw a few on him. I was surprised yeah. Pavon uh, missed the cut last week, but uh, yeah. let's, let's see if he can pick it up this week at 150 to one. Justin Rose has been playing awful. He's 200 to one. Jan. Uh, yeah. Anybody else here? Long shots that uh, you throw a buck on? I, I, I like right now. I'm liking. Um, well, I can't believe that Tiger's at that that bad down there. Let me see. I like um, – God, I can't remember his, 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 his name. Um, the guy that won, won the Australian Open. The, um, oh, Neiman? Neiman. Oh, he ain't no long shot. 
Neiman is what shot? is he? Sixty that's to one, eighty 50. to one, something like that. Yeah, that's fifty or 60. fifty to one, right here. Fifty yeah. to one. Oh, uh, okay, that's too. No. Yeah, you're not good. By the way, uh, Mickelson. I was looking at Mickelson, and uh, keep in mind that even though I think his uh, major days are over. Uh, he is like 500 to one or 400 to one. And uh, mm -hmm. he, he does have a second and a third at Troon. So he's played wow. really well at Troon. Um, and uh, matter of fact, I think Troon might be, besides the, the one he won, Troon might be his best open championship venue statistically. So keep that in mind uh, if you're looking for some uh, really crazy long shots. And, uh, uh, and I think that's pretty much uh, going to wrap it up. So anything well, else? Well, you figure Mateo is going to have a good tournament. I hope so. I think he's got to get off to a good start. The only thing is, as we close out here, just keep in mind, uh, as far as our picks, again, if they hold up, PM, AM is what you're looking for. And for our picks, um, we have Young, Cameron Smith, Morikawa, Cantley, Kepka, and Clark in the PM, AM slot. Um, and our picks in the, in the bed... Uh, slots we have Hatton, Finau, Mateo, and Sung J M. So, and the rest of them are kind of in the in between deal. So, um, yeah. Oh, and also Batia. Batia is in the PM AM grouping. Okay. So, uh, we'll see how that works. Again, we're gonna have links in the description for uh, the windfinder.com. And I, and I think we also, uh, I, I believe I'm also gonna be able to put a link in the description for a few other things. Um, I'll try to put a, a link in the description for Royal Troon so you can check out the holes because we only showed you two of them. So I'll, I'll put a link in the description. You can check out all 18. Uh, they're on Twitter. Uh, by the way, if you want to order Peacock, you can get the early round, sort of like ESPN Plus. No ESPN Plus this week. So you got Peacock between 1.30 and uh, uh, 4 a.m. and then 3 or 4 <laughs> p.m., um, which I don't know what that's about, but the 1.30 to 4 a.m. slot just on Thursday and Friday. Other than that, it's all USA Network, picking it up at 4 a.m. Eastern until 3 p.m., 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. <laughs> over the weekend. And they also, by the way, USA Network will pick it up early in the morning at 5 and 4 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. So, Jan, appreciate it. Glad to have you back again. Uh, yeah, hope everything's going uh, well for you. Thank you. I'm going to go hit balls. Uh, yes, you go do that. No. Yeah. And, nice. and Jared, uh, thanks as always. Uh, we'll talk uh, in the next yep. couple of weeks. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Great to see Good, you luck. Guys. Good luck to speak, guys. Yes, yep. absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, great to see you. And also just to remind everybody to subscribe, like, and share. And we'll see you next time here on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson.